Today, I'm going to explain a movie based on relevance. It's a new Western murder mystery film called Wind River. It was during the winter on Wyoming Wind River. A girl was crying and running in the snow with bare feet when she falls. The movie scene changes. A hole gets shot by a hunter called Cory. Cory is a US fish and wildlife agent. Cory then goes to Walmart, his ex-wife, and asks her to take their son with him to the Indian Reserve, where Casey's grandparents live. Walmart agrees, but tells Cory to take care of their son and don't lose sight of him. Cory lives with Casey. You can feel the tension between Cory and Walmart. Walma tells Corey that she is going for an interview in another city, and if she gets the job, they will have to talk about Casey's alimony. Since the school cost of living in Jackson is much higher, Corey reassures her that everything will be okay. Corey was called upon for his work too by the travel chief, Casey's grandparents. He saw Corey's animal trace in the snow and asked Corey to take care of it, whatever it is. Cory then heads to the wild on a snowmobile to track down the mountain lion. Instead of a lion, he finds blood and footprints in the snow. He continues to follow the footprints in his under camouflage outfit. He aims his gun at the body. As he approaches, he finds a dead girl in the snow. The same girl we saw crying and running at the beginning of the film. He calls the local tribal police and asks for help. A snow storm begins and Cory asks the tribal police chief named Ben Soyo to let him go out again and follow the trace before the snow cover and disappear. Tribal police Ben denies his request as he needs permission from the FBI. Cory knows the girl's name is Natalie and she was his friend's daughter and his daughter's best friend. Soon after the FBI arrived, the lady from the FBI introduced herself as Jen Banner. Jen wants to go to the body as soon as possible, but Ben and Cory tell her that he will die of cold before they could reach the body. Cassie's grandparents give Jen's clothes and tell her to bring them back since they belong to their granddaughter Emily. Then we see a picture of Cory's daughter wearing the same. Cory's face freezes for a moment as he sees Jen in his daughter's clothes. Cory, Jen, and Ben head out to the body. Jen examines the body and she declared the case a homicide. Cory tells Jen that Natalie was running until she collapsed. Jen then asks Cory, Is there any place nearby where she can stay since she can walk that far with bare feet? Then he tells everything around that place where he can stay. Cory continues, Whatever it was, he came here running seems like trying to escape from something dangerous. And when she reached here, out of the cold, she died from pulmonary hemorrhage caused by sub-zero air. Jen asked Corey to help her and join as her assistant in the case. Later that day, Corey explained to Cassie what happened to Natalie. Cassie asked Corey if he died like his sister Emily. Corey says yes, she lost her way and the cold killed them both. The next day, Jen visits the medical examiner. Natalie's autopsy shows signs of blunt trauma and tells her she was raped multiple times and beaten. Jen gets into an argument with the medical examiner since she cannot declare the case homicide because the cause of death was from pulmonary hemorrhage if not homicide. Jen is unable to call an FBI team to the reserve. She is upset since she knows that without the FBI, the case could not be solved. Now, she has to solve the case by herself with the local police. Jen and Ben visit the dead girl's parents and they start questioning the father, Martin. Jen's behavior upset the family as he approaches them without respect and sympathy. Corey knocks on the door and Martin opens and bursts out in tears. They talk about how Corey processed his daughter's death. Corey tries to confront Martin and he tells him he soon try to avoid the pain unless he wants to forget about the memories of Natalie. Martin tells Corey he's too tired of life. He tells about Natalie's new boyfriend, but they don't know about him very well. Since Natalie reached 18, she was free to do and can interfere, and his son is also lost. Martin tells Corey that his son Chip is a drug addict and he thinks she has something to do with Natalie's. Corey tells Martin if he finds out who did it, he will shoot right away. Then Corey and Ben visit Natalie's drug addict brother Chip. Jen and Ben knock on the door while Corey looks around a man opens the door while being high on drugs. He sprays them with pepper spray when they try to run out at the back door. Corey hits them with a shovel, knocking them unconscious. Then enter the house half blinded and 
sought at the man, misses the sword, but then shoots multiple times, killing the man. Natalie's brother Chip learned that his sister is dead. Cody shows then how inexperienced he is. He saw her as no mobile stress, leading to the place where they found Natalie, but there was no trace of coming back. They follow the trace until they find another mutilated dead body in the snow. Cody talked to Chip. Nevertheless, Chip tells him he isn't even an Indian. Why does he care about the place? Chip tells Cody he met Natalie's boyfriend met Raven, an older guy who's a security guard at the drilling rig. Cody visits Walma and reassures her. It isn't about the daughter, Emily. Walma shuts the door and Cody leaves. Then met with Cody and tells him the man they found in the snow was met a security guard at the drilling rig. Cory invites Jen into his house and Cory tells Jen about his daughter Emily. Cory tells her that three years back, he went out with Walma for dinner and they left Emily with their son. Casey and Emily threw a party while their parents were gone and even people they never met show up for the party. The next day, Cory got a call from Natalie and she told him Emily disappeared. A safer found Emily's dead body 20 kilometers from their home. They couldn't find out much since the wolves tear Emily's body into pieces. It was the same condition as Natalie's case. He continues that parents should look after their children with care and should not miss even a second because anything can happen. Hearing that, Jen got sad and came to know why Cory is helping her case. And also, they came to know that the dead body was Natalie's boyfriend who met Raven. On the next day, Cory, Jen, Ben and travel police head to the drilling rig. Ben feels like they need reinforcement, even if only Zen has the authority to act on the drilling rig's ground. The convoy heads to the rig, but Cory takes the high ground with a sniper rifle. When Zen and the police arrive, they pretend they don't know their security guard mate is dead. Zen asks the guard what happened to them since they have bruises all over them. The guards lead the police in Zen to meet Kevin, but we can feel the tension rising in the atmosphere. Cory finds the lion footprints and starts following them. When he finds the lion's mother dead, lying on the ground, he starts observing the drilling site. Banner, accompanied by tribal police chief Ben Soyo and other law enforcement officers, visit the drilling site where they are met by several of the security guards. They claim Matt left a few days here following an argument with Natalie. One guard mentioned they heard about Natalie's body being found and Banner said that Natalie's name has not been released to the public. The guards claim they learned it by monitoring a police scanner. One of the Banner's team noticed the guards are slowly surrounding them and draws his weapon. The confrontation quickly escalates into an armed standoff which Banner defuses. Corey tried to reach Ben to warn him but gets no answer. Jen knocks on Matt's trailer door where his roommate Pete is sleeping. We switch to the night when Natalie was killed. Natalie knocks on the door. As Matt opens it, they have an intimate moment and talk about moving to a big city. Matt tells a story about how he spent Christmas at a beautiful small place near Los Angeles. When he was in the Navy, he wished to move there instead of a busy city like New York as they talk about moving there and living a peaceful life. Matt's drunk co-worker arrived from the city. They thought they are going to stay in the city for the night. The drunk Pete start harassing Natalie and the other refused to help out Matt. Matt kicks Pete off the bed, but Pete attacks him. Matt starts beating Pete, but the other takes Pete's side in the brawl. They beat Matt and Natalie unconscious. Natalie wakes up to Pete, wrapping her as Matt gains consciousness. He starts fighting his co-worker. Natalie flees into the frozen wilderness, underdressed barefoot, and runs while Matt is getting killed by his co-worker. We sneak back to the drill, where Zen knocks on Pete's door. While Zen tries to enter the cabin, Cody finally reaches Ben, warning him about the gods. Ben tries to warn Zen, but she gets shot through the door. They all start shooting each other. Ben gets killed. Zen kills the man. But Pete starts to rain bullets on the police with an automatic rifle. Every policeman is on the ground and the rig guards start killing who is still alive. But down a policeman. Zen reloads, but a guard takes away her gun. As the guard is about to shoot Zen, Cory blows a hole in his chest with his sniper rifle. Zen takes cover and Cory shoots down the remaining guards in the cabin. Cory killed the last remaining guard, leaving Pete alone, who tried to escape through a wood. Window. Jen shoots and hits Pete, but runs off into the wall. Corey examines Ben's wound and says it isn't little since her vest absorbed 
most of the bullet back. Zen tells Cory to go and get it. Pete. Cory tells Zen he won't bring him back. Zen nods and tells him to get him. Pete is wounded and frightened. Cory snowmobiles and collapses to the ground. Cory knocks him unconscious. Pete wakes up far away from his cabin. Cory took off Pete's boots. Pete tries to talk himself out of the situation and Cory agrees. Cory says if he tells him everything, he will give him a second chance. Pete admits that he raped Tali and bit mad to death. Cory has promised to cut the rope on Pete's hand and say he can go. Pete starts to run barefoot. Cory took out his shoes while she was unconscious. After running about 100 meters later, he collapsed and started vomiting blood. So he dies just like Natalie did with pulmonary hemorrhage. In the hospital, Jen is recovering. He presses her toughness. Then Cory visits Natalie's father Martin. Cory is in Natalie's room. He finds old picture with, with her daughter Emily on them. Natalie was his daughter Emily's best friend. Martin is sitting outside in his dead marks. Martin says he was about to give up but the phone rang. His son Zip called him after a year. The film ends with Martin and Cory sitting in silence. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.